Hello everyone, my name is Chris Chan, and you're probably wondering why my hair is color black. Well, you see, a long time ago, fuck you. Now that we got that away, allow me to explain why I'm making this video. You see, I, Chris Chan, have quote-unquote vandalized one of the covers of Sonic Booms in GameStop. And I sort of pepper spray one of the employees. But to be fair, I was defending myself. The right to have freedom of speech and such. Yeah. So, I am here to, to uh, make an entire video reading to you on why I did it. So that being said, let's begin. Because some of you guys probably don't even like reading anyway. Attention, everyone! To preface what has happened recently, I simply remind everyone that Sonic the Hedgehog arms are not freaking blue. If hashtag Sega had never changed them or reversed the change between February and November of this year in a new Sonic Boom video games and cartoon series on Cartoon Network as well as the toys and whatever else, I would never have to protest the rebel the way I have, including the creation of my group. Fix Sonic's arms immediately, Sega! Within my group, I have led by example to push forward the path of waking Sega up and forcing them to change Sonic Arms color back immediately and to confess I have done my part for real. I have professionally gone into three of the four local game stops, including the Fashion Square one, three times to personally protest in my silent way. First attack I printed as seen on the Facebook group the fonts of Sonic Boom game inserts, affixed a double-sided tape onto the backs, and affixed them into the fonts of their respected displaying game boxes on the shelf. Second attack, about a week later, I checked the success of my first attack. Damaged a few original inserts pretty well to full removal. And what was still there, I made attempts to transfer the inserts from the original cases into behind the inserts of different games. I have not to briefly explain my reasons and the protest and told them that they should not be selling the blue arm dandy games in the first place and they should send all the remaining stock of Sonic Boom games and stuff back to Sega to make them change Sonic Arms colors back immediately. They did nothing. And one last week later, the third and final attack and the only one and only time that the Fashion Square location has been involved as well. I made up and printed Fox price tag decals with the short note to discourage purpose of the Blue Arm Bandit games and promote protesting boycott. And with the five Wii U software cases that each melted a bit from my house, fire last January, as well as five smoke damaged 3DS games case. No melting, I have printed a full font side and back insert the boycott encouragements and the notes of the back to make the stores send their remaining stock back to SEGA! I have run into individuals giving me bad grief for my protests and actions outside of the Fashion Square location. But I have done my duty in full to the my best of my abilities at the individual moments and circumstances. I have also had hidden all the blue armed Sonic toys at Toys R Us there, concealed hidden among their metallic met metal cupboards so they all would not be sold and best boycotted for the protest. They remain hidden for the longest time of over a month, found and reshelved near the 20th of December to my personal dismay and crestfall. And at Best Buy, all copies of their Sonic Boom games are still successfully concealed and hidden from view and purchase. Anyhow, after the final attack for the protest near a week later on December 8th, I have typed and signed address and U.S. mailed apology letters. 
with the promise to have been done in my person protest deeds with no further actions therein to all but the fashion square GameStop, and I have sent one to Toys R Us as well. I have thought that the FSGS would overlook that one attack of protest on them, but obviously, I was mistaken. Which brings up up to now. Last Friday, the 26th, my mother and I were at the mall, getting pizza and spaghetti for lunch. She had informed me of a good mini refrigerator deal at Sears. So after eating, I made my way to check it out. Nothing else happened at Sears! And I went nowhere near J.C. Penny that day. There was a good 3 to 1 cubic feet fridge for $129.99 that caught my eye. But that is to be purchased later. On the way to Sears, I peeked into the GameStop and I spotted a new Skylander figure. Blast of mind. I was set to buy it and I was going to consider checking out their Wii U pre-owned software selection in their 3 for 2 deal. Innocent. I was not looking for trouble. But then this male loomed out in front of me, frightened the crap out of me, and he said in a booming voice that only scared me worse, You are banned from here, and you need to leave now. But still determined to continue my shopping, I veered into the Wii U direction. When his female accomplice started me and booming in as well, still real frightened and mentally overloaded, I made a grab for my pepper spray to use in defense. I offered a few peaceful solutions, but she ended up sending him to go get security. So I shouted, fine, I'm leaving. And I dropped the figure. And on the way out, I told the male to not get anyone, and we both stopped near simultaneously. I still felt my own worst from where, with the fear, startle, paranoia, and I did not want him following me, causing more trouble upon me. And then in my defense, to make my escape, I sprit sold a minuscule amount of pepper spray downward, not onto its face, and then I left. I did not learn until much later that the spritz has gone a lot worse than I have imagined it would, as well as learning that they were the so-called manager and ass manager of the particular store. I had no idea of the context of the pepper spray, or that it was illegal for use in certain situations in the state of Virginia at all. And I had tied the stuff myself days before the upstairs bathroom, a two second spray onto my left wrist. Some of it got onto the bathtub as well. Like sampling a perfume or the rodent, it took me out damn as well. I had to open the windows, turn on the bathroom fan, and aim the box fan into the bathroom to air the place out. And I wiped the walls as well. And of course I washed my hands. It took 15 to 30 minutes to make it bearable in there again. In the yes, I mean, in the end, yes, I went along peacefully when the police arrived to collect me. And I had to spend a miserable weekend in jail. And I just got out on the bond and bail. Yada, yada, yada. In the end, I was the victim. I did not cause the original provoking. The assistant manager made the first attack onto me and provoked my defense's response. I was minding my own business, not looking for trouble. And then he startled me, similar to a protest rapist in a dark alley in a big city. Any of you would have done the same as I have in defense and escape. And we can sue Sega for changing Sonic Arms color and ultimately this male getting pepper spray. Think about it seriously. And my protest actions are not acts of vandalism, 
regardless of your individual perceptions, it was not vandalism, but a good protest when in around 2004 at Fashion Square, where I tried their new soda machines with a credit debt card slot, and then I learned of the $5 surcharge that bought my bank account into the freaking red. I suddenly posted sticky note signs onto each machine shortly after. This machine charges you $5 per card use. A few days later, the original machines returned. Nobody gave me any freaking grief or complaints at all about that. And if you really want to see the whole mess happen, go find the security tapes of the time of point A my finding blaster mine to point B of my departure from the store. Now, if you excuse me, I have a lot of much required packaging to take off. Good day. You're probably wondering where I got the wig. I found it outside.